Today, let's talk about couplers. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the couplers that I am hoping to eventually implement on all my cars on my layout. Uh, so I'm sure most people are familiar with your standard KD couplers. Uh, there's also these uh, style, the, the horn and hook style connectors. But there are also these. Let's focus this. So these are sergeant engineering couplers, uh, and they are quite a bit different than your usual KDs. So these are uh, actually fairly close to scale uh, replicas of the AAR couplers, or your standard couplers that you see on most trains. So I'll show you here. It's actually got a knuckle that opens and closes, just like on the real McCoy. And compared to KDs, they offer some definite benefits, but also um, some challenges. So let me show you first how they operate. Each knuckle, or each coupler, I should say, is made up of you know, four pieces. So we have the knuckle itself. We have the main body, you could say, with the drawbar, and then the top of the drawbar that goes together. You can buy them also pre-assembled uh, in packs, just like that. And there's the, the spelling and everything. Uh, but you can also get them in these kits, which make them a little bit cheaper, especially if you're, you're buying them in bulk. There is also, this is where it gets really fun, very tiny springs and ball bearings. Let's see if I can, I'll use this little uh, jig here, which is actually used to help build them. To kind of demonstrate. So if we place the knuckle in, there's a little pin on the body. So it sits in just like that. And then I won't actually do it here, but you can see there's a little let's bring it to focus. There's a little pocket in there. Right down in there. So that's where the ball bearing sits. And that's actually what replaces uh, what's the pin on the prototype. So the pin is what on the prototype is actually lifted or dropped in to secure the knuckle. Uh, you lift it to uh, release the, the knuckle and let it swing. And then you let the pin drop, which uh, allows it to stay coupled. So to operate a Sergeant Engineering coupler, you can use some kind of a uncoupling one. This is just a uh, skewer with a rare earth magnet stuck on the end and then this is actually a resistor lead just helps to operate the knuckles and if you place it over top what it does is it actually pulls up the ball bearing i'll get my hand out of the way here and allows the knuckles to swing open and then when they couple the ball bearings allowed to drop back down locking the knuckles in place and they won't come apart once again, you can use a magnet to release the, the pin, to raise the pin. And then gravity just handles the rest. So a lot more like how the real ones operate. Uh, the real ones would have an operating lever that would lift that pin. Uh, in this case, the magnet just takes its place. So why would you use these Sargent Engineering couplers as opposed to just your standard KDs? So let's have a look here. So these are your standard KDs, or some variations of. This one's 
I'll say this is Atlas's version comes with. It's a plastic. Um, so one thing is these all have these trip pins. Kind of look like air hoses, but they're they're not really. Also, so this on this one here, that is actually a semi-scale coupler. Probably one of the better looking ones. If you compare that side by side with a Sargent engineering coupler, there's still quite a difference. Another thing to have a look at here, if I can get these on the track. Look at how much slack there is. Cars bang around quite a bit. Also, the uh, process of coupling and uncoupling on these is not how the real ones work. So, there's no knuckle to worry about having to stay open or anything like that. Um, they just are spring-loaded and self-centering. So now if we have a look at the Sargent engineering couplers, first thing you'll notice is there's a lot less slack. Still some real trains have slack too. We don't want there to be absolutely none, uh, but there's a lot less versus a KD. So as I mentioned, these are a lot more kind of prototypical to operate. Um, just like on the real couplers, there's a pin that needs to be pulled. Open them up. Second thing is the knuckles can actually be closed or open. So there's two different positions. Um, and having, having personal experience with it, um, you always want to, if possible, on the real railroad, open your knuckles. Makes the joints easier. See if I can pull it off here. You should be able to, with just one knuckle open, car on the right here, be able to make a joint, and you can. But if the knuckles are a little misaligned, it's far easier to do with both open. So that's a little extra step that conductors on the real railroads have to worry about uh, that isn't something that you have to think about with KDs they're spring-loaded they always are, uh, will connect you can also because if both are closed box the couplers and uh, it doesn't work and uh, in in the real world worst case scenario you can actually break knuckles or break couplers this way too you can also see now that i've i've tried to connect them when neither of the knuckles are open they've swung to the side and they're not self-centering the springs i showed you earlier here are actually not centering springs. They're to give it a little bit of tension so these aren't too loose. So just also like the real world couplers, real world couple, couplers do not self-center. So if, you, if you're coupling on a curve on the prototype um, or if the coupler gets knocked out of alignment, when you're backing up that car, you have to make sure those knuckles are aligned. If they aren't, that's the conductor's job to get in there and line them up. You'll also find that unlike railroads, and this is can be one of the disadvantages too, um, it's always best to try to avoid making a joint on a curve because alignment matters. Uh, even in the prototype where curves are a lot broader, uh, generally uncoupling or coupling on a curve is best avoided if possible. Same thing if you're using these, which as I mentioned can be a little bit of a challenge. A lot of railroads, model railroads, um, are going to have places where you are going to have industries and things on a curve just because of space constraints, uh, and that is a limiting factor. You might have to align the cup or align the knuckles so that they're going to mate. The other thing is, is that with these, uh, kind of your stage of operations of coupling and uncoupling are a lot more like they are on a real railroad. For one thing. Although nine times out of 10, these are actually pretty well broken in. You're going to get a joint. On the real railroads, what you will do is you will get the two cars, you will get them backed up until they make contact, 
and then they will do what they call stretching the joint. So they will actually pull forward a little bit, make sure the joint is good. Because uh, just like, and I don't know if I'll even be able to get them to do it here because they're behaving actually almost too well right now. But sometimes the, nut, the pin just won't drop, the knuckle won't lock, and you'll go to do the stretch and the cars will just come apart. And then you have to get back for a bump, get the joint secured, and then you can carry on your way. Same thing with uncoupling. Just like on the real railroad, these, if you have tension on the train, so if there's no slack in the train, uh, you can't pull up the pin. They won't release. But as soon as you get a little bit of slack, they should open up. That's exactly how couplers work on the real railroad as well. So sometimes you have to get the engineer to push back to get a little bit of slack so you can pull up that pin and get the couplers to release. So just these few extra little steps, it can definitely make it more work to do switching. Uh, it can make it more work to operate. Uh, you know, they aren't as quick and simple as your, your standard KDs, which just, they just go together. Uh, but they are much more prototypical in their operations, not to mention more scale. So one of the other challenges is, is that if I can tip it up here a little bit, the tolerances are a little tighter. Um, depending on the couplers you use, the semi-scale ones aren't that much different, but um, you do have to be a little tighter if you have too much uh, travel up and down. They can come undone. On cars like this, it's not going to be a real issue, but on something like a 89-foot flat car or something like that, you definitely have to watch out if there's, there's big dips or whatever in your track work. So good track work is always a benefit when it comes to these. So some of the other drawbacks, and I've seen some questions asked about this too, uh, because the magnet activation is actually from the top, you can't use the embedded magnets like you can for a KD. You don't have those trip pins at all, um, which to me is an advantage because you don't have that kind of unprototypical look. You can actually add airlines later to these things, something else I'll show in a future video. But uh, yeah, you can't have like a remote operated uncoupler or something like that, like you can with KDs. So because you can't use the remote uncouplers and magnets, uh, it's something to consider when designing your layout if you want to use couplers like this, is that uh, everything needs to be in easy reach. You need to be able to get in with an uncoupling wand like this to be able to access the cars. Uh, so when I designed my layout, I made sure any place I was planning on doing the switching would be within easy reach from the edge. So I will also show you here, there are some different variations. Um, so this one I've got uh, the shelf style, I believe, what do they call these? Uh, shelf uh, SE type knuckle. Uh, still compatible with all the others, just like the prototype. Hopefully it focuses decently here. There we go. So you can prototypically match the coupler. Uh, they also have different lengths for fitting onto things like locomotives. Here's my one locomotive that I've converted, and it did need a longer shank. Focus is still an issue. So it needed a longer shank on the coupler than the cars do. And there's also the Type F couplers for things like passenger cars and uh, a whole other variety of different couplers. Uh, a lot of these are, seem to be out of stock at the moment, uh, but uh, hopefully the, he will produce some more at some point in the future. One of the other challenges can be seen here uh, with my uh, car here with a semi-scale KD. You might be able to get them to connect, as I did there, but they're at uh, kind of an odd angle, uh, and they're not meant to be intercompatible. So generally, con it's considered an all-or-nothing conversion. So you need to take that into consideration. Uh, it may not work reliably with KD couplers, certainly not recommended. 
uh, with a weird angle like that, I'd definitely be concerned with it coming off the tracks around uh, curves and things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, don't expect it to be compatible with your existing rolling stock. So one of the other neat things is that the guy that actually runs this has open sourced these designs. So hopefully more manufacturers will adopt these, but I don't think we'll ever see them replace KDs per se. Which I think segues me really nice into kind of a wrap up. Uh, in summary, I love these things, um, especially having been a conductor and uh, operating the, the real McCoy. There's a lot of what a conductor does is between the cars. So to be able to add this operation to my model railroad is uh, very important to me. That being said, I don't think these are for everybody. And they are probably not going to replace KDs ever. If you are the kind of person that just wants it to couple and to couple every time reliably, these are probably not it. Uh, and I want to be clear, it's not that these are unreliable couplers, it's just that they work like the prototype does. The prototype couplers do not join every single time, neither will these. Um, as you can see here from what I've demonstrated in this video, <laughs> once they're broken in, they can be buttery smooth and will be 90% of the time. Um, but you know, that odd time, you go to stretch that joint, and you're going to have to come back for a bump, make sure those cars are, are coupled. Well, thanks for having a look at the Sergeant Engineering couplers with me. Uh, you will probably see some more as I continue to convert my fleet and use these on my own layout. Uh, if you did find that informative and liked it, uh, please hit that like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And there's a little bit more information on my website over at tinkeringgeek.com. And until next time, keep tinkering.